I wonder if I'll ever be able to properly put into words what it is about Chinese fiction and Chinese writing that is so unique to me. I feel like I'm possibly in danger of exoticizing Chinese culture, Chinese literature, Chinese writers, Chinese writing styles, if I'm not careful. I used to live in China, and I don't think that has anything to do with my reaction to Chinese writing. Gun to my head, what country produces my favorite books? Japan probably followed by Korea, the UK, Argentina, China's up there. But I wouldn't put it at the very top. And yet, there is no reaction like the one you have when reading Chinese fiction or any kind of Chinese writing. There is something about the rules of Chinese writing and the methods and the ways in which pictures are painted in your mind that is so removed from the way that other writers play with language, imagery, it's really tough to nail down. And as I said, I could be in danger of exoticizing here and I don't want to exoticize. It's just a trend that I've noticed amongst every Chinese author and writer that I've ever enjoyed. Even the ones that write in English, like Yi Yan Li or Shao Lu Guo. These writers still have a way of approaching language Chinese, English, or otherwise, that is entirely unique, and I don't have the language for it. All of that is to say, that reaction that I always have to incredible Chinese writing was present all the way through reading the stories of The Shadow Book of Ji Yun. I was made aware of The Shadow Book of Ji Yun by its translator, Yi Izzy Yu. She has been a wonderful supporter of ours for a while, actually, and she's really, really cool and a fantastic translator, as is proven by this. But the book was actually co-translated by John Yu Branscombe and Yi Izzy Yu. And the two of them together have brought to life the real writings of a really fascinating individual from Chinese history, Ji Yun was a Chinese philosopher and politician. He was a very powerful, famous, and well-respected individual from 18th century China. I'm actually, to paint a picture of him, gonna read a little bit from the introduction because it's so good and it really, really paints a picture of who he was. So I'm gonna read the first paragraph from the introduction so that you can see why Ji Yun was such a fascinating figure. Imagine if a public figure of the intellectual caliber and cultural heft of Benjamin Franklin had not only overseen such national departments as those of war and public works, had not only been one of the most celebrated scholars and poets of their time, but had also, after experiencing several otherworldly events, taken it upon themselves to investigate 18th century X-Files and write about them with a chilling storytelling flair that reads like a combination of H.P. Lovecraft, Franz Kafka, and Zhuangzi. What? Like, what? That, it's insane. I read that and I, 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 could, I didn't know what to say. You know, on the blurb, it says, imagine if H.P. Lovecraft were Chinese and his tales were true. And that really stuck in my head. And it's very, very poignant and accurate. That is exactly what you get here with the Shadow Book of Ji Yun. So what we have here is a collection of stories. But these stories are true. And I, I can't help but say true like this because they are metaphysical and supernatural and frankly impossible, most of them. They're separated into three parts and part one actually makes up like 90% of the book and it's a collection of stories that either Ji Yun himself experienced through his life or stories told to him first or second or third hand from people that he met or family members or colleagues, people he randomly approached on the road during his travels across China, whatever. These are stories that he has somehow encountered and come across or experienced himself. And then part two is like, I don't know, about 40 pages, it's a collection of maybe a dozen or so stories that are pretty much exactly the same as part one, but these ones are considered more about folklore. So rather than being encounters with ghosts and spirits and monsters, these ones are the same thing, but tied to folklore. So I guess more like experiences with gods and saints and spirits that are tied to the Taoist and Buddhist religions of China. And then part three is a single conversation about death and the afterlife. And I found it wonderfully riveting. It's kind of about materialism. It's a few pages long, and then you get a glossary and a bunch of other stuff. 
So the main bulk of this is a collection of stories that Ji Yun encountered and just tells here. Now the stories are really short. They range from one page long to five or six. There's a few of them that are a bit longer, maybe 10 pages, but there are like a hundred stories in here. This is a 250 page book with probably a hundred stories in it. It, it. There's a lot packed in here. Some of the stories won't hit you very hard. They, they don't even seem that interesting. And then others are utterly remarkable and every single one of them is true. If you're a writer, if you're a novelist, if you're a short story writer, there is a lot of influence that you can pull from here. This is imagination fuel, no doubt. One of the stories I really enjoyed was about the idea of a ghost that is the ghost of someone who has committed suicide and afterwards realizes that, ah, they didn't really get what they bargained for. The afterlife isn't quite what they wanted. They're in limbo, they're unhappy. And so what they do is as a ghost, they find another person to lure in. They lure that person through creating a mirage and the mirage isn't what they think it is, and then they end up dying in some horrible way so that the ghost can swap souls with them. It's brilliant. In the particular example that we have here, there are two instances of this ghost doing its work. One is a guy who is like a night watchman, and he's walking through a town square when he sees this house lit up by candles inside, and he pokes his head through the window and he sees a beautiful woman who beckons him. So he puts his head through the window, and then it turns out that there is no window, there is no house. He actually puts his head through a noose and gets strung up on a tree. And then there's another one of a guy who wanders into a lake fully clothed and gets pulled out of the lake only to explain afterwards that he thought the lake was a tea house and all he said was, I walked in because I was thirsty and the ghost was trying to drown him. It's a really cool idea and that is one of about a hundred stories in here. These are stories that Ji Yun has just encountered from conversations with people he's met, but there are a lot that are first-hand experiences, things that he claimed to have seen when he was a kid or as an adult on the road, at his job, with his family, in his home, etc. One really poignant one is from his childhood, and this one stuck in my head like a thorn, and it was him saying that up until the age of five, he used to play with a group of children out in his yard, and then one day when he's about six years old, he says, hey dad, where are those five kids I used to hang out with? And his dad says there were no kids. And obviously that sends a bit of a chill down your spine, or the kids were ghosts. But what those ghosts actually were is fascinating because his dad turns out to kind of be aware of them. And the dad explains that before being married to Ji Yun's mother, he was married to Ji Yun's aunt, his mother's older sister, which was normal at the time. She died and so he then married her younger sister. But while he was with her, they couldn't conceive. And so they went to this local monk, I think, who, who created these straw dolls that were approximations of children with faces and features and everything. They gave these children names and they even slept with these dolls in their bed as a way to kind of manifest real children. Eventually the dolls developed souls and it was those souls that were playing with his son once Ji Yun was born. I thought this was so cool. And this was followed by another tiny little story of the ghost of Ji Yun's dad's first wife, his wife's older sister, visiting her younger sister while she's asleep. So Ji Yun's mother is asleep and suddenly her sister's ghost pops up in a dream and says, are you gonna let your son play with knives? And she wakes up to find that her son is pulling a knife out of his father's sheath. The ghost was keeping an eye on her nephew. Oh, so cool. So those are two examples that stuck in my head. One of a story that Ji Yun encountered, another that he experienced himself. But I promise you there are a hundred plus stories in here that all carry that kind of a weight, but to different effects. And as I said, some are about ghosts, some are about strange phenomena, some are about godly and spiritual experiences, and some are just impossible and strange stories of people disappearing mysteriously, stuff like that. And John Yu Branscombe and E. Izzy Yu have done an amazing job of translating every single one of these stories. I can't imagine how much time it took, but what we have is a complete 
compendium of the incredible thoughts and ideas and musings and experiences of a man who was hugely respected in his time. He was famous. He was a politician. He actually got banished at one point, and it talks about his banishment as well in the introduction and in some of his stories. His stories make reference, like, when I finally got back to Beijing after being banished, I saw a ghost. And So there are little snippets of his life stitched in here and there, but you can read the stories out of order and just pick one at random, and it's kind of a nice thing to do before bed, pick up a story and see if it spooks you. And as I said at the beginning, there's something about the method of writing that Chinese writers manage to emit, and I just, I, I adore it, and it's present here, and I don't have the words for it. But if you're a huge fan of Chinese writing, it's amazing how incredible and important and rare something like this is. The strange supernatural musings, writings, and experiences of a very important man from Chinese history that people don't know enough about. And it's like finding a strange historical record. It's like we've dug into a tomb and uncovered these amazing tales. But actually, we didn't have to dig into a tomb and find them. It was done by the incredible work of Chinese to English translators, and for that and for them, I am always so grateful. So please check out The Shadow Book of Ji Yun. It is a really cool relic and wonderful fuel for your imagination, I promise. It's eerie and harrowing and strange and exciting and beautiful. Really, really fun stuff. Subscribe for books.